Are you wondering what sort of insulation materials you need to use in your old house? Well, if it was built before 1930, it's definitely going to be breathable, which means it's vapour open. If it was built between 1930 and 1940, it might be breathable, which means that you have to use vapour open materials throughout. Now, if what I've just said makes absolutely no sense to you at all, then go and look at this other video which does explain it all and then come back and join us. Briefly, if your house is built with a single brick wall, so you've no cavity wall and you've suspended floors over a subfloor void, then your house is breathable. Now, your builder will probably tell you that you can use this. It's called PIR, it's made with petrochemicals and it's definitely not breathable. So if you put this into an old house, you're going to end up with problems. The difficulty is it's familiar, it's easy to access, it is very efficient for its size and you, you'll have seen it leaning up against a skip somewhere. But Please go and do your research, find out everything you can about it before you agree and have the conversation with your builder because this is a risk in a house built before 1930 and some houses built between 30 and 40. If you have to have an insulation that's thin with high U value, then this XPS is a better version than the PIR. It's less damaging to the environment, but it is very light. It's made from extruded polystyrene. So if you must, if you have to do that, and there are some occasions when you just need the thinnest insulation for the best U value that you can manage, then XPS is the best one to use. It isn't breathable, but you just have to accept the risk sometimes. So now we've got that sorted, everything I'm going to show you now is breathable, vapour open and perfect for an old house. It's all also sustainable, so much better for the earth. I'm going to show you the samples I've got, there's more than this even, but I'll find out about those and tell you more later. So this is wood fibre. This is piece is called a bat and it's made from the dregs of the wood when everything else has been used, so even wood for the bog roll. So nothing is wasted, but it's got, uh, it's flexible, so it fits in easily and you can pack it together, which makes it good for air tightness. It's good for sound uh, and it's very totally sustainable. We've got this throughout the house and we've just got this waiting now to go into the new garden office. This is another form of wood fibre, but this one's rigid, whereas the other one was more flexible. This is rigid. The advantage of this is its tongue and groove, so that helps you with your air tightness. We've got this in our bedroom. This is a thick loop we used, about 80 mil, but it's very efficient uh, and uh, it gives you good air tightness. So this is an interesting one. This is called diathonite and it's a thermal plaster. It's made from cork, clay, and something called diamaceous earth. The advantage is it can go on to different thicknesses. We've got this in the front room uh, and around the bay, the Victorian bay window, and it varies between 100 mil down to about 40 mil, so we could shade in and keep the shape. And there are versions of this for external wall insulation as well, so that's a good one to look into. If you're needing to insulate your loft, then glass wool is something that's often used, or rock wool. Uh, you do need to wear gloves and your thing over your nose, but um, it's, it's very good flammability. But an alternative to that is sheep's wool. So this is sheep's wool. It's been treated so you won't end up with mites and all, si all sorts into it, but it's natural and very sustainable. This will be an old familiar to some of you, cork. I remember when we used to have cork floors a lot. Um, this is vapour permeable uh, and it can be used, I'm reading the label on the back, for cladding, tiling and rendered finishes. So cork like we used to use a lot. This one is quite hard to say. It's rigid wood wool board. <laughs> We're going to use this in our garden office because actually it's a very nice finish that you don't need to do. You could paint it over, but it's a nice, a nice finish. So uh, this one is uh, a natural alternative to plasterboard, but also very good acoustically.
Here we've got hemp. Now hemp is actually grown in the UK now. I heard about somebody recently who's got a farm up in Scotland growing hemp for insulation. So that makes this very sustainable and very green. Uh, and it, this is good between rafters and joists and within stud walls. So you could use this where we, we use, have used wood fibre. This is a favourite of mine. It's called Pava Textile and it's made with old denim jeans, cotton t-shirts and velvet. Can you imagine having your roof stuffed with velvet? We've got it over our bathroom and I remember the day that we put it in. As soon as it was in, it made a big difference to the warmth in the room. So you've got plenty of options, it's spoiled for choice really. So go have an explore, do some research, just remember you're always looking for vapour open or breathable. There are a number of providers that can supply this sort of insulation so I'll put some links down below so you can go and have a look at them and if there's any questions just let me know.